So today, I'm happy to welcome a panel of travel advisors who are joining us to give some real insight into some trending destinations. We know that 2020 has been a tough year for the entire industry, but with some positive vac vaccine news recently and a lot of pent-up demand that be that's becoming increasingly impossible to ignore, we wanted to give our audience access to advisors who have experienced things firsthand and can give us information on how the destinations are trending. So I'm very, very happy to welcome Kristen Perry, the founder of Classic Travel Connections, who was also a previous guest on this series. Uh, Connie Marshall, the manager of tour relations at AAA Travel Services. Mandy Letourney, the, the co-owner and lead agent at Letourney, Letourney Travel. And Mandy, I apologize if I- It's okay, you're doing well. <laughs> and uh, Adam Martindale, the owner and founder of Martindale Travel and Tours, a cruise planners agency. So I wanna say welcome. Uh, so much to you four for lending us your time today. I know we're going to have a great conversation. Um, and I wanted, so I wanted to start out by giving you each a, a chance to talk to me about your recent experiences. Each of you are here to talk about vastly dis different destinations. I'm going to do my best to balance your time and take questions we have from the guests. But first, I want to go around and let each of you give an introduction to your destination. And I want to start with Adam. Um, Adam's here to talk about Mexico, which has been a big destination. And I know it, that's also been hit from COVID, but it's been one of the ones that have been constantly mentioned as winners who, or ones that have fared better during COVID. And I want to give Adam sort of a couple minutes to tell us about your recent experience there and, uh, and what you saw while you, were, while you were traveling. Okay, great. Yeah, so I actually uh, went to Puerto Vallarta twice. I've been down there in August, went down there for my birthday the first time. And then I also went down there again last month. Uh, so I've actually uh, experienced the destination a couple of different times over the pandemic. Uh, in August, I stayed at three different properties. And last month, I stayed at six different properties, uh, three nights in each property to check them out. I, I took this as an opportunity because I do mostly cruises uh, before. So I took this as an opportunity to experience some land destinations and resorts to get myself more aware of, of the resorts I'm recommending to my clients. And also to experience them, you know, what's happening down there uh, as far as the pandemic. So as far as what Mexico is doing, when I flew into Puerto Vallarta the first time in August, I was very impressed. I flew on Alaska. I live in San Diego. So it's a really easy flight. It's two hours, 20 minutes direct on Alaska. Yeah. You can also fly through Tijuana here and go through the cross-border express and fly on Volaris or a couple other Mexican airlines, which I've done a few times before but I felt it was better this time to go through uh, San Diego with the pandemic. Um, Alaska was great. I flew first class. It was hundred dollars to upgrade to first class. There was three of us in first class. One of them was a flight attendant going down <laughs> on vacation and two of us, a uh, great experience there. Arrival experience in Puerto Vallarta was great. We're, uh, we were the, the first plane in, I think in the morning. So when we arrived, the immigration customs came running out. They put their temperature check on. They had the sanitizer handed to you to, to do your hands. You walked over a sanitizing mat. Um, you went through the luggage claim, which came out very fast. I went outside, they fogged the luggage uh, and they wiped down and sanitized the car door handle. I had a transfer waiting for me and they sanitized the car door handle before you got in the car wow. and then you're off to the resort. So I felt that was a great experience, arrival experience um, in August. Uh, we got to the resort. Uh, the first one we stayed at was the Grand Bellas uh, Resort, which was a beautiful experience there. Again, the arrival experience, similar thing, uh, sanitizing, uh, temperature check, walk over a sanitizing mat. Everybody at the resort uh, was wearing masks, uh, face shield. Obviously, masks were required through all the experience that I had before that. I didn't mention that before. Uh, but at all the resorts we stayed at was I could talk for quite a long time, so you have to cut me off. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, what I mean, I guess I want to get to Connie because we I just saw someone drop in about Orlando, and I know she's been here to talk about us Orlando. But I want to, I mean, what was the what was the what was the sort of a crowd like, Adam? Was it was it a busy was it busy in Mexico and at the resorts you were at? So in August, the occupancy in all the resorts was only at twenty percent, so it was very quiet, uh, which I really enjoyed. It was great, great experience. Uh, one thing that you need to tell clients is, especially even now, they're up to 40% last time I went. So some of the restaurants and some of the resorts are going to be closed at uh, different times throughout your stay. They're going to be able to experience them all probably through if they stay enough time, yeah. but they're not all going to be open like they were before. 
So there's things that you need to know to tell your client uh, that it'll be different. Yeah, and I do, I do want to circle back a little later because I know we have a lot of advisors in the chat who do book Mexico and who have been to Cancun and, and other destinations in Mexico during COVID. And I know, I know they, they're going to want to ask them questions. But Connie, I want, to get to, I want to get to you. I know you're located in Florida and you're here to talk about sort of Orlando's bigger destinations and bigger attractions. Um, can you tell us a little bit about your recent experiences? I know you didn't have to get on an airplane to get to those destinations, <laughs> but... Um, I'm curious about how we had a, we had a couple of advisors on to talk about theme parks uh, a few weeks ago, uh, and I, I'm wondering I mean, when was your most recent experience and what was it like? Okay, yeah, you're right. I am a local Orlando resident, so I've lived in Orlando all my life. So I've had an opportunity not only to watch Orlando grow, but to watch the theme parks grow and and um, just get just crazy, crazy changes at the theme park. So um, I work at the AAA National Office and. Um, being the uh, tour relations manager, we wanted to be able to give the clubs and the advisors kind of a firsthand experience. There's a lot of information out there about um, the theme parks and, and probably even some of the advisors on the call today have been to the theme parks. I know Mandy has uh, been to Orlando anyway. Um, but um, I wanted to be able to you know, provide firsthand information to them. And so my experience was, um, again, being an Orlando resident, I am very fortunate to pick and choose when I go out to the theme parks. And typically, COVID notwithstanding, August is not one of my top choices to go. However, um, I was on a mission for discovery. So I went out to um, all four of the main Disney parks and um, both Islands of Adventure and Universal Studios in August. So um, much kind of parroting what Adam said, you know, the, the experience was quite well done. Um, very, even from the parking lots, you know, obviously I didn't fly to Orlando, but driving out to the parks, um, you see their first action when you're even coming into the parking lot. So they're distancing the vehicles as you're parking um, every other one. So that, that was something really, really different, but they're keeping everybody apart before you even step out of your vehicle. Then they fill in those slots later as the day goes on. Um, temperature checks at, at first walk, very a very smooth process, very well done. Um, signage, you know, everywhere, everyone's wearing masks. You know, you get a feeling um, that uh, you know every thought has been attended to, and I can go into more detail about that later. But um, you know, overall, the experience was um, great. As I said, I think. Uh, I have this to talk about a little later, but I think uh, with the travel advisors now in Florida, we're coming into our beautiful months, the time that everybody wants to be in Florida, December, January, February, and March. And um, it's gonna be a really lovely time to be out to the parks. And I will say August was a challenge with the mask. That was one thing that I anticipated. Um, and just with the heat and the mask, it was a little, it was a little, um, you know, it was a little different element than you're used to. Yeah. Um, but overall, a, a fantastic experience. Yeah, I mean, I think that's what I've heard from advisors is that the masks in Florida in the summer, especially, seem to be the biggest uh, hurdle to get over. Um, and I yeah. really do hope this is Orlando's last summer with a face mask requirement because it's uh, it's such a great destination. Yeah, agreed. And, and you know, very hopeful and encouraged uh, by what's going on right now that by the time we start to get into our heated uh, months that the face masks will no longer be required. Uh, Mandy, I want to I want to let you sort of have your turn. Um, you okay. spent a lot of time at Caribbean destinations since uh, COVID COVID started. I'm wondering where did you go and uh, what was that experience like? Sure. So where I headed was Jamaica. I actually was at Jamaica twice. I've done a ton of traveling during the pandemic. Um, Central Florida seven times, Mexico a few times. Um, but I, Jamaica, I found really, I felt, felt safe everywhere I went. Yeah. Jamaica, I was shocked at how safe they were. I mean, really over the top, which was amazing, right? Because we everybody wants to feel safe when they travel. Um, I would say that I expected to be safe there, specifically on resort. I stayed at Beaches Resort both times in Negro. Um, Upon arrival, in, um, I went there in August and again in October. In August, we weren't required to have a COVID test. Then by the time I went in October, we had to have the COVID test. But both times were identical in the sense that upon arrival, you went through a health screening. Um, that does add some time to your um, initial arrival. Uh, we did get Club Mo Bay the second time. The first time we did not. It only saved our wait time by about 20 minutes. 
So a lot of people have been asking if Club Mo Bay is worth it during the pandemic. I would say yes, but not by much. I think it really depends on the timing of those aircraft. And of course, you know, what day of the week it is. But we, I, I would say tack on just to be safe an extra hour to your experience in the airport just to get through that screening. Um, we did sanitize a total, and I counted, I didn't count the first time, but the second trip I counted, we had to sanitize from the time we stepped off the flight, um, which I flew on American Airlines, all, all the legs of the trip, um, 13 times uh, between landing in um, Montego Bay and get, arriving at the resort in Negril. And so I really, you know, between the health screenings, the extra sanitizing, which has stepped up from even the United States. When you're, when I traveled through Charlotte and through, you know, um, Philadelphia, yes, I felt safe in general, but really at Montego Bay, they make you sanitize before you even enter the airport. Um, so it was just that extra level of protection. And then when on resort, same thing, we actually uh, a little bit, we made the comment, my family and I, that coming back to the USA, we'd have to actually get out of our safe zone because we felt so safe on resort compared to anywhere at home because of all the extra safeguards and protocols that were in place. So um, that is something that I would definitely uh, advise uh, travel advisors to share with their clients that, you know, if they have any reservations whatsoever, I would argue that uh, you would feel safer on resort on island. Um, there's the natural social distancing built in too, being on an island like Jamaica. You know, you're on the beach, you're spread apart. So there's that factor too. And we didn't find at all whether it be, you know, a little bit of extra time in the airport and of course the face masks. But once you arrive on resort, our experience was really the same. I think that no matter what destination that our clients travel to, that's a major concern is if their experience is the same. And I can honestly tell you our experience is the same, if not better, because it was that step up in cleaning. The crowds were a little bit less. So we actually had a better experience than we ever have in the past traveling to Jamaica. Yeah, I mean, that, I think there's, I think every supplier right now has to be struggling with uh, a balance of, uh, of, of sort of intrusive procedures, but, uh, but all those, all these cleaning procedures and, and protocols that are keeping people safe. And hopefully I think inspiring consumer confidence, which I, is, should be the ultimate goal, uh, keeping people safe and inspiring consumer confidence. Um, so Kristen, I want to let you have the floor for, for a couple of minutes. Um, I can see the sunshine behind you. So I know you're remote right now. Uh, and I know you spent some time in Africa during COVID too. Um, I mean, tell us about, for, I think first tell us about sort of your experience uh, on safari and then tell us about, you know, where you are right now. Absolutely. So like Mandy, um, starting in about May, I began to feel a little more comfortable to travel and um, traveled a couple of times to see my children who live all over the country. So I've kind of seen that whole air, air, traffic thing um, developed since May, which is, it really has, it's changed a lot over the last, you know, six months or so. And um, I, I wasn't quite ready to go out of the, out of the country yet, but when I did, I was like, neither go big or go home. So I decided to go to Africa and um, went to Africa November 1st. So very, very recently. And um, we were in Africa for 14 days and I just had the opportunity to join Live Life Safaris um, on a fam for um, travel advisors, there were 10 of us. And um, it was one of those things that was what I call an easy yes. I, I just knew it was their time and I knew that I, I wasn't gonna think about it. I just decided, yes, I'm gonna go and I'm gonna give it, um, give it my best shot. And um, it was life-changing. One of the most amazing experiences that I've, that I've ever had. And I am so grateful that I was able to, to have that opportunity. And um, we went to Kenya. So we were in Kenya for, you know, outside of travel days, we were in Kenya, I believe for 11 or 12 nights. And um, just again, going back to what each one of you guys have said, Mandy, Adam and, and Connie, um, the travel, the air, air traffic travel was just so easy. Um, we had, for Kenya, we had to have a, a COVID test 96 hours prior to arrival. So your COVID test had to be taken and received back between um, within 96 hours. So that sometimes can be a little bit um, difficult, I guess, um, but some, and something to be very aware of. But we did have, like I said, 10 advisors from all over the country who we did our COVID tests different ways. Some did it through CVS, some did it through the health department, some did it you know, through other ways. And each one of us got in no problem, got, got those taken and, and back in 
all arrived um, on time and, and no issues at all. And so um, it was it was actually my first COVID test um, in the, the, this whole time. So it was a little bit of an experience there. Um, but um, when we got, as far as the air traffic, no problem. Um, everyone with this, the plane felt so safe and I, I'm a Delta girl, so flew Delta and KLM. And I will tell you, KLM was a little um, a little better than Delta as far as the service and how clean I felt and, and healthy and safe and et cetera. Um, but um, I, I'm like you, Mandy, like, you know, you get you get to somewhere like Africa, you're outside all the time. We, you're even in, in your transfers, there are open air transfers, Jeeps, and um, every restaurant is outside. It was just, it felt like, um, it was just, it was comfortable. I never felt un I never felt unsafe. I never felt uncomfortable. And like I said, it was it was it was an amazing experience. Now that being said, they were very, very on top of the of the COVID protocols as well. Every time you every time you drove into a property, we changed camps. I can't even tell you maybe six times because the purpose was to get to know the, the destination and to and to get to know the, the company and all. But every time, you know, you just you just got used to you stick your, your wrist out the window and they just come and, and temperature check you. So even if you went shopping and came back, temp checks. So that was constant. And then um, obviously all of the, the cleaning protocols and everything were, were there as well. And, um, and I can answer any questions uh, about that experience. We were all over the, the Maasai Mara, all over Kenya. It was- hey, uh, hey, Christian, we actually have a question about Kenya that came in the chat. Uh, Beth wants to know about COVID tests required for Kenya because she's a group going in January. Um, are they allowed to do the rapid tests or are different tests? It know? was a PCR test. Um, it has to be PCR. So um, yes, and that's that's all I know. It, ha it has to be a PCR test. We have a great, I'm from Alabama and, and from Birmingham, and I've got a, a lab down the street from us that can turn them around in less than 24 hours. Wow. So it's, I, I have an advantage that a lot of people don't have. Um, but, um, but yes, it is a test. And, um, also, um, well, what was the other question? Oh, mask. I saw somebody ask about mask. Yeah. So, so yes, when we would show up to a, to a new resort, a new camp or whatnot, yes, we would wear masks and, and the whole staff, everyone is wearing masks because the markets, you're going to wear a mask. Um, so now we were with the same 10 people all the time. And so when we were all together, just us and as far as transfers and um, in, in restaurants and things like that, and no, we did not wear a mask. Yeah, and I, I think, I mean, that's, it's, it's good to hear each of you talk about your experience and talk about, I mean, you guys are all very seasoned travelers. So obviously you have a level of comfort, comfortability that maybe uh, new travelers won't have, but it is nice to hear that how safe you all felt. Um, and I think that's good for advisors to know going forward too. Um, and I want to, I want to ask about Nesk about sort of, uh, objections from clients who, who you've had conversations with. I mean, have any, I guess we'll start with Adam. Um, Adam, have you heard when you're talking to your clients now, um, are there, are any of them particularly worried about any kind of protocol or procedure, um, when traveling or are they, are they shy to book right now because, because of COVID or because of say that they they'll be forced to wear a mask on an airplane or they'll be forced to take a PCR test before they go or any of those objections more common than others well with Mexico in particular I have two families going at the end of December and uh, they're going down to Cancun and one of them become I just became a little worried and they're sending asking me a lot of questions about the protocols and what the resort's doing and what happens if you get sick and all that type of stuff so I'm able to send them all that information, which is great because all the hotels, one of them is the Iberia Star that I actually stayed at in Puerto Vallarta. But if you go on their website, they actually have all that information on their websites now. And every major hotel chain has that information, uh, what they're doing uh, for COVID, what they're doing if somebody gets sick, the isolation rooms that are available, all that stuff. And I sell Alliance Insurance and I make sure they have that because they're covering COVID as well. So they felt a lot more comfortable after they got all that information. And also when I explained the situation about what well, Mandy mentioned, when you come back to the US, they do absolutely nothing as far as temperature check, sanitizing. They'll even ask where you've been from Mexico, which is unbelievable to me. Uh, people can't believe that all the precautions that they do when you go down there. 
and they don't do nothing when you come back. So when you explain a lot of those things, they do feel more comfortable. And having had first-hand knowledge of it, it makes a lot of difference. Yeah, and that's what we've heard that throughout the series that the, the people who do have first-hand knowledge, I know we've had a couple of advisors who have been to Mexico and they, uh, they, they do very well posting their experience on their Facebook or sending in an email to clients in a newsletter. And uh, I think that does make a big difference. Yeah, um, I, booked, I booked three trips while I was down there for people to go to Mexico, two for December, which was awesome. Oh, wow. And, and, that, and is, that from, is that just from sharing your own experience yep. down there? Yeah. Yep. Um, so I, wa I want to ask Connie, because, uh, because when we had the, the theme park advisors on a, a, month, a month or a couple months ago, um, they, they, they talked about sort of the different experiences they were having at the Orlando theme parks. And they talked about some, some clients are worried that, you know, they're not going to, with the price point they'll be paying, they won't be, they won't be getting their money's worth. Um, can you talk to me about that, about how you talk to clients who are worried about paying for an experience that might, they might perceive as being watered down and, and what advice would you give them? Well, um, first of all, I think there's there's a lot, you know, as they say, the magic is still there. And certainly, um, I think both of the parks, Disney and Universal Studios, have done a really good job in, in keeping those experiences alive while still tending to your safety. Just for example, in Universal Studios, um, they still have, they're, they're not timed parades, but they have street performances and they have mobile units come by that will stop and dancers will come out and you know, fun things and fun activities to really just kind of keep the energy there and keep the excitement there. Um, but they have employees that are, um, you know, spaced out just to make sure that nobody kind of comes in and crowds anyone, that nobody gets too close. So um, they still, Universal still has a lot of performances going on, a lot of stage performances and that type of thing, which um, I think, you know, for, for me, again, going so many times living here as an Orlando resident, I, I didn't feel like I had a watered down experience at Universal at all. Um, Disney, maybe a little bit, um, only because they're not doing their fireworks, which everybody looks forward to, and their time parades. But uh, Disney as well has done character cavalcades. So they are, you don't know when they're happening, but all of a sudden, you know, just a, a float type thing comes through with characters and they're waving. And because the crowds are reduced, um, Mandy touched on this a little bit, um, speaking about her destination, in some ways you get an enhanced experience actually because there isn't the crowd. So you have these close-up experiences, you are able to get on more uh, rides because you're not you know, burning uh, two hours at you know, Animal Kingdom to go on the safari. I literally walked on it in five minutes, which you know never happens. So you, it, it's just, um, I think I would tell advisors to tell their clients to manage their expectations is that you're going to have a different experience, but not necessarily a worse experience. There are some things that you're going to lament a little bit, again, like the fireworks and the planned parades, but then there's just the ability to get so much more for your money. So many more things that you can see, so many more things that you can do. And um, I just think that they, they go to great lengths to make sure that, you know, you still have a fabulous experience, but one thing I do want to mention, and this is not a negative, again, this is just part of what I would say to advisors on the call when they're talking to their clients is just to, um, again, I call it managing expectations. So uh, one of the things that's different um, in the Magic Kingdom in particular is that um, food is not as readily available. That's not to say that you can't get food. It just means that some of the restaurants in the parks are closed, um, just like I think Adam mentioned at destination. So you just have to be prepared for that. You know, a lot of um, diehard Disney fans and even Universal Studio fans have their favorite things to do in particular parks. And you want to make sure that uh, Disney has a site um, on their site. It's snow before you go. And I think as long as you're prepared and, and I'll just give you a little kind of silly example. Um, my daughter and I love Casey Rogers in the Magic Kingdom. There's those mini corn dogs. Don't ask me why we absolutely love them, but we absolutely love them. So it's the first thing we want to do when we go to Magic Kingdom. So when I arrived at Magic Kingdom, that's the first thing I wanted to do. And I kind of stood there with the wah, wah face because Casey Rogers was closed. So in the big scheme of things, not a big deal. But again, um, you just want to know ahead of time that, you know, some things that you're used to might not be available. But again, the selling point is 
an enhanced experience, I think, is there because of crowd reduction, things that you wouldn't have been able to do before. Yeah, and I think that's, I mean, I think that's important to know, and I think that's also why a lot of people should be looking through advisors now, is because advisors are the ones who know about uh, not only their requirements, but also what kind of experience you're going to get, especially you three, you four, who uh, who have been, who have had those experiences firsthand. And Mandy, I know you, I know you book a lot of uh, Orlando, too. Um, is there anything you want to add to, to what Connie said? I want to Honestly, I want to agree with Connie 100% that um, when, when you asked her the question about experience, that is what we have been telling all of our clients that, that it's just in some cases, not even in all cases, but in some cases, it might be a different experience. But I, especially for, you know, as an avid Disney goer, um, although I'm not like Connie that I live in Central Florida, I am in, in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. I'm down in Disney and Universal, usually about 10 times a year at least. And I would say it's probably been the best year that I can remember. And that's, if you would have asked me that in April, I wouldn't have believed it. Um, but looking back on this year, my experiences in the theme parks, as well as the Caribbean, have been enhanced. Um, again, with the, the parades, I actually never liked the parades. I thought that there was too many people. My kids right. couldn't see the new cavalcades that are there. It's great. It's always a surprise every time. Yeah. You, the music plays and everybody gets excited. So it's something different, but I feel it's better. And we've gotten that same feedback, um, you know, from, from all of our, our Disney and Universal um, clients that they were pleasantly shocked that we were right. What we told them is right. And, and, and again, I agree with Connie about managing their expectations. What I like to say to clients specifically is, is there one thing in particular you're looking forward to? She gave the example of eating at Casey's, but um, whether it be an attraction or a show, just so I can be sure that it is open at the time that they travel. But really overall, we've got rave um, reviews from people that have visited and say they've never been happier that they went. And again, the low crowds, you know, people are, um, that's a concern that we have, that people are gonna get a watered down experience. I think you get more for your money. I really do, because I feel like you do more in a day um, and you're able to finish those days earlier. Uh, going to the Caribbean, Besides having to take that PCR COVID test in many cases, that experience has been identical as well. Um, you're wearing a mask whenever you're in a position, for example, on the shuttles where you can't social distance. Um, they're not packed by any means. They're very spread out in your social distance. That would be really the only case we wore a mask because when you're on resort and you're at the beach in the pool, again, you're naturally in an area where you're social distance. So people love um, the people that I saw on property, and again, to Jamaica alone, um, I've sent 52 couples or families just this year, and we have over 150 on the books for next year already, just for Jamaica. And I think that us being there has been huge because clients have gotten to, to and you know, it's, it's not just it's free to travel. reading experience, but it's actually, you know, um, getting to experience that, our clients see we experience that, and by them having those expectations, it gets them excited, it makes them feel confident. So I would tell advisors to, if you can, get on property as much as you can, not only to experience it, but so your clients can see that. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I completely agree. I mean, we have a comment about, it's a long comment, but it's about St. Lucia and, Dominic and Dominica and how luggage was fogged. And every time we got into a vehicle, the vehicle gave us hand sanitizer. I mean, I'm in New York and I mean, one thing we heard here was that the subways were getting cleaned. And I mean, it raised the question of were they ever getting cleaned before? Like it, the world is cleaner and more sanitized than it's ever been, which I think should inspire a lot of consumer confidence um, and, and, and uh, cut a lot of worries. Um, Kristen, I know you had a long haul to Africa. Um, you told me early in the week that you, you, trans, you transferred through through Europe, through Amsterdam, um, and there was a lot of documentation that you had prepared beforehand. Can you talk to us about that and how you would prepare your clients to be prepared for a long haul if, if they want to have the same experience that you had? Yeah, absolutely. And, and I'm sure most of you guys are so aware that uh, the protocols can change in a second. I mean, sometimes they change day to day and you, and you don't know, know quite what to expect. And it's so important to be on top of those and to know what each country is doing, especially if you have someone traveling to that country. But we were very well prepared and we had a very little time to do it in just because the fam was, um, it was a last minute, um, a last minute opportunity. And but we had to get a visa and we were able to turn that around within a few days, but it's really important to know all of the things that you need 
to get that visa. So I had actually had to go to, to Walgreens and get a new passport photo because I had to upload that. Um, they would, they didn't like my current one. And, um, so there, it did, it took a little bit of a, it was a little bit of a work to, you know, to get it done, but we, then we had to complete information online to get through, to transit through Amsterdam. And so, and I printed that out for, for the, um, departure and the, you know, going back and forth, both legs of that. And, um, I mean, there were just several, several different things that we had to do. I felt like I took a book with me um, along with my passport because I had printed out so much of the paperwork and pre-prepared it and everything. Um, took, you know, shot records just in case they asked that type thing. Um, however, got to Amsterdam. They didn't ask for a thing. We had to go through a whole separate little area and do it all over again right in front of them. So it, it I, I think it's more important to be overly prepared than to get there and not have a clue what you need. Um, but I did see several people turned away because they did not have their COVID test printed out. So I think it's so important and it doesn't matter where you're going. I would say 100% have your clients print that out if there's a COVID test requirement because sometimes they're going to take it from your phone and sometimes they're not. And, and we even found in our group of 10, we had different experiences coming through. Um, some some airlines were were different than the others, and so I think it's just very important. Just tell them to print it out every time and be safe, so that no one is surprised when they get to to the airport, and and you don't want anyone to be turned away, obviously. Um, but yeah, going through Amsterdam was was I was a little concerned about that, just because I've been through Amsterdam several times, and it's always it's always a, a little bit of a uh, you know, it can be a little bit chaotic and can take some time to go through that transit time. But um, it was super easy. They've changed their process. So now you don't stand in the queue line for an hour and a half to, you know, to go from one gate to the other. Um, they do they do the transit part, like right either when you get off the plane or before you get onto your next one. So it was a very, a very great experience. The, the KLM lounge was as wonderful as ever. Um, great, everything was provided, great food, great, you know, drinks, coffee, all of those things. So I, I felt I felt really good about being in Amsterdam, other than the fact it was a little sad because it was a little emptier than the normal. But to be quite honest, it was it was more busy than I thought it would be than I expected. So I was glad to see that as well. Yeah, I, and I think the the thing the takeaway is that I mean, being over prepared is way better than being underprepared. I mean, you don't want to get on a connection to Amsterdam and realize that you're not going to get they're not going to let you have transit through. Correct. Yeah, that would be a mess. That would be a mess. Um, but no, it was a great experience. Um, easy and like I said, over prepared is best. Um, we have a question from Miriam and uh, Mandy. I want to let you answer it uh, quickly if you can. I mean, she's sure. asking with COVID restrictions in mind. Do you have a do you have a top three Caribbean destination recommended recommendations that you would give to your clients? So based on COVID restrictions, I would say that they that all of the islands that, that uh, we work with in the Caribbean, which are a lot of them, um, are similar in the sense that there are restrictions. So, you know, just some simple advice to make sure you're checking those, those tourist board websites on a regular basis and, and staying up to date with what those requirements are. But I would say that uh, the top three we've been sending clients to are Jamaica, St. Lucia, and Grenada. Uh, we haven't had any issues, any client complaints to those destinations. Um, everybody has felt safe. Their experience has been the same. And again, although there are requirements such as COVID tests, the process has been been smooth and we, we haven't had anybody with any issues. So I would say those top um, would be my top three choices. Yeah. And just going off of what Kristen said, um, what would you, rec I mean, when you're sending a client to Jamaica, if you were sending them in January or February, I mean, what how would you make sure they were prepared before they went in terms of documentation? What I mean, what would you make sure they would have on hand when they're traveling through an airport? So the first thing that I do is uh, myself is I make sure I check whatever the current guidelines are to make sure I'm educated and up to date with those because they can change very frequently. Obviously, what could be the case last month is not the case in January. So that's the first thing. And then obviously, I check them frequently. I also then communicate those things via phone or in person to the client, usually on the phone. Um, and then 
I also advise uh, the, the client to, on their own, make sure that they are reading any uh, requirements for that country. So not only things that I am sending through emails or through paperwork, but also directing them to those tourist board websites and also the resort websites that they're visiting and advise them to do it on a regular basis. Before they travel as well, I'm making sure I almost do a checklist with them. Again, I do it in multiple ways. I do it via email, on the phone, and then I, I ask those, you know, say to them, sometimes even Facebook along the way, if they're connected through social media, Facebook or Instagram, I'm saying, you, you know, if they know that they're leaving for the airport that morning. Do you have your passport? Do you have your tra travel authorizations printed out? Um, do you have those negative COVID tests? Just as many layers of protection as I can to give them um, to make sure that they're covered. Yeah. Can I bring on that for a second? Go ahead. I think exactly what Mandy's saying, it's, it's super important. We've instituted in our agency um, a, a procedure where people, our clients, before they leave, they have to actually check, check, I read the, I've read this, I've read that, and I've read this, sign their name and submit. And that way we make, now whether they read it or not, and we found that they don't read it actually, but they said that they did, and we know that we provided the information information to them and um, it, it really covers really covers yourself covers your advisors if you're an agency owner and it, and, it, and it covers the clients as well so I think it's very important that they know or that they're aware um, in not just one way you're right Mandy lots of lots of ways over the phone through a consultation pre-travel as well as email where they sign that they read it um, and, and again, make them be responsible. I mean, even with, you know, with Orlando destinations, like Connie was speaking of, there, there could be requirements, you know, for, for theme park admission, et cetera, communicating to them, that, you know, as clearly as possible and as much as you can, but at the same time, making sure that they are themselves, like you said, it's hard to make sure they're reading it, but make sure they're clear, um, you know, in a way, whenever I word emails and such, you need to make sure you're looking at this so that they're taking some responsibility for those requirements as well. Yeah, I, I want to let Adam and, and Connie uh, chime in too, but I want to just ask you, Chris, Kristen and Manny, I want to ask you guys just, I mean, you talk about all these requirements and protocols and documents. I mean, do you have any, what, how do you two keep yourselves up to date on what your clients need when they're traveling? Is it, is it a matter of just making sure you have the latest information from the tourist boards? Uh, Kristen, uh, do you want to, do you want to take that one quickly? So every morning, obviously, you wake up and your your email is full of all of the protocols and anything new that's happened over you know the last 24 hours. And so I have it within our agency. I have um, within our portal. I have a list of every country, and um, and I we go in almost daily and we update anything that's changed. And then that way, as soon as it's updated, then I let the whole team know that it's done, and um, they know that. That the protocols have changed and then then at that point they know that they need to send the new protocols to people they have traveling you know in the next um in the next little, little bit um it's just it's really it's it's not easy to keep up with them because it's a lot and each country is different and each region is different but um but yeah we just we just stay on top of it and and my team is so great in that when they see something new they post it immediately um, and if it's something that I haven't caught yet, then I can go in and change it for everyone. So that's that's pretty much how we do it. Um, we haven't had anything slip through the cracks yet. So, yeah, well, that's something to be proud of, I think. Um, Adam, I know Mexico's a unique destination uh, compared to the rest of them. I heard a variety of different things about uh, protocols and procedures there. I'm wondering how you prepare your clients if they were traveling to Cancun or Puerto Vallarta. How would you uh, prepare them for their trip and what documents would you make sure they had before they're uh, heading to the airport? Yeah, uh, similar, so similar to what Kristen said, actually, I'm lucky because Cruise Planners as a company updates everything for us. So I don't have to do any of that, which is really nice. So on, the, on my website, every day it's updated by the corporate office and Cruise Planners with all the COVID uh, changes that's happened throughout any destination in the world. So it's really nice. I've actually posted that a few times on Facebook, uh, which people didn't realize. They can just go there and click on it and see all the different things that they need. But we particularly with my clients that are going to specific destinations, I just make sure that they're aware of what they need, similar to what you know everybody else has said. Mexico is a little easier, obviously, because there are no COVID requirements. Uh, there's no COVID testing or any paperwork to take with you. 
I had clients recently go to St. Lucia and they had to do all the stuff that Mandy was talking about in the Caribbean and walk them through that. And they had a great time and no issues. Uh, but again, Mexico being so easy, there's really not a lot to tell them uh, to do, except for if they want to, there's things that I would recommend that advisors do tell them, uh, not related to COVID in particular, but in the resorts, uh, one thing that I found that was not consistent in the places I stayed, uh, you make sure they ask for the app on the phone because every resort now, not, there's nothing in the room. Like there's no menus, there's no, there's nowhere to find anything unless you have the app. And one resort never told me about the app and I forgot to ask about it. I'm like, how do I order room service? So like, didn't you, get, didn't you get the app? They're like, no, no one told me about the app. So you got to make sure that you sometimes ask for that, but it's really important. To, it's good to tell your clients that there's going to be an app now that's really helpful. That you do everything on the app pretty much when you're staying in all-inclusive resorts now. That's one thing that I, I learned from going down there. Yeah, and I, I, I mean, I think the industry was shifting that way anyway, and COVID just sort of sped that process up, you know, times 10. I think technology is just going to be so uh, installed in every aspect of travel, and I think uh, I think COVID sped up that process. And Connie, Adam mentioned an app, and I know Disney is pretty heavy on their app. Um, I mean, can do you want to chime in on sort of what we've been talking about? Uh, anything you want to make sure you tell your clients before they head to one of those theme parks, anything that you want to make sure they have in their hand on their way or any other, any other things you want to add in there? Sure. Um, the, my Disney experience app is, is, uh, I think, uh, to live and die for even when COVID's not in existence. So I would recommend that to anyone. Um, I, uh, a couple things popped to mind, uh, you used to be able to manage fast passes through the, my Disney experience app and Disney doesn't have fast passes at the moment. Um, but again, kind of speaking back to enhanced experience versus a better experience, um, you don't need fast passes now. So that's kind of the beauty of it. I think uh, I've heard um, some of our advisors say that clients are concerned that they can't, they can't get fast passes, but honestly, they don't need it. An example of that is um, if you've been to Animal Kingdom into Pandora and Flight of Passage is one of the most popular rides. My absolute favorite out of all the the four parks it's fantastic i have personally stood in line in the heat um for three hours to get on that ride worth every minute by the way however when i went in august it was still hot but i literally walked on the ride now it's a long long uh path up to where you get on the ride so it took me 15 minutes to walk <laughs> up there but i never i never stopped i never stopped moving um, so, uh, again, that fast pass aren't really an issue because you don't really need them. Just one kind of thing, a uh, note, I think, um, while we were talking, Beverly Kelly mentioned that, um, if you were looking to interact with the characters, obviously that's not the same experience pre-COVID. And I just wanted to confirm what she said. Yes, there are no physical interactions with the characters. Again, I think Disney does their very best to make sure that you kind of have that feel. But I think that goes back to what Mandy mentioned earlier. Uh, my advice would be, yeah, maybe you sit down with your clients and you say, well, if, you, if you're a diehard Disney fan, what were your top three things to do when you were there? Or if you've never been before, what would be your top three things that you would want to have happen? And obviously, if you have small children or yeah, I've seen adults gush, I gush when Minnie comes by. So <laughs> you don't have to be a child to want that to happen. But if that's on your Disney bucket list, you know, I want a photo or my, my daughter or my son wants a photo with me or me. And that falls into that category of managing your expectations and, and knowing, you know, that that's not going to happen. Just one other thing I want to mention that, that isn't really advice, but that I didn't touch on was, again, both of the parks. I don't really want to leave Universal out of this because they've just done a fabulous job as well is um, all of you, most anybody that's been to the theme parks are familiar with the way that the queues snake, you know, as you go through. And so you're facing people and next to people all of the time. And while they have the um, spacings on the floors, everything is, is marked uh, outside the rides, inside the rides for the staying the six feet apart. But they've just taken an extra step, I think, and really invested in our safety. Um, I they've even put um, uh, plastic partitions between so you can see through but there's no you know they they've cut that space down where if someone's sneezing next to you or just even standing as you go through the queue you're, you're still very protected and very very safe um they're spraying down rides where they can um they're staggering i know on splash mountain sometimes you may be the only person 
you know, in that boat. So they're, they're really um, on advantage. Every other car is empty. So um, again, in terms of safety and what you're telling your clients, uh, they really have just knocked it out of the park. Both of them have. Um, and then, um, you know, the last thing I would say again is I just think that this is really a fabulous time of year to come to Orlando and this is where masks won't be an issue. And uh, from my perspective, um, I would take great advantage of the, the reduced crowds and the nice cool weather and it's a great time to come visit the theme parks. And I know, I know the Disney brand recognition is incredible. It's universal too and I know uh, when, when things do open up a little more and travel restrictions sort of get pulled away, I think the demand is really gonna, is really going to drive crowds heavy. So uh, I think I completely agree with you uh, there. Um, so we have about five or six minutes left. Um, any questions, please drop them in the chat. I, I can add them in before we wrap up here today. I do want to also mention that uh, we do have a resource tab on Travel Marker Report on the training tab. If you guys are looking for any other uh, resources to, 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 for uh, links to Taurus Board's website, stuff like that, you can head there. Um, and I, I do, I, I want to go to Kristen now. Um, cause I know how big of a trip, a trip to Kenya and a safari is. And something you mentioned to me earlier in the, earlier in the week is that one of the advisors who was on the fam with you came home and booked, uh, had a big booking to Africa that leaves very quickly. Uh, I wonder, I wonder if you could tell us about that. I can. And when I want to lead into that by saying, um, something similar to Connie, if you are comfortable and, and, and confident in getting out there and experiencing now is the time because, um, you know, talking about watered down experiences versus um, enhanced experiences, I think you can really put a twist on that for your clients who are like, well, it's not going to be that great of experience because of this. I mean, you really can can make that a pro instead of a con if you if you know your if you know your destination and you learn your destination and know everything you know about it, you can learn about it. Um, first of all, when we were there normally in the Masai Mara, when you pulled up to a site where there was a leopard or a lion or, you know, one of the big five, you would be pulling up to, you know, 20 or 30 Jeeps and we would pull up there maybe like two or three. And so we were able to really, really experience those animals up close and personal. And um, it, it was super, super special. I mean, like to have a lion from me to that window right there was you know, so crazy and, so, and amazing. Um, so I would say, um, think about those destinations that are open air, that are that are nor naturally um, socially distancing, you know, and, and really get to know those because I think that's gonna be um, what the wave of the future is, what in what clients are gonna be comfortable with. And which is what I'm, I'm doing here in Guatemala. I'm actually like, that's Lake Atitlan right behind me. And it's beautiful. We are naturally socially distanced and, all these little villages around here are doing the same thing, like you're talking about the QR codes. Um, I mean, it's everywhere. Um, so things are changing everywhere. Um, but as far as um, my friend, just encouraging you guys to get out there and, uh, and, and experiencing what you can and what you're comfortable with. Um, my friend that was my roommate on the, on the safari, she, um, she had never really disconnected from, from, our job and which I know many of you don't, you feel like you do it 24 seven. And she was really apprehensive to go and, and she was back and forth, back and forth. And she decided to go and um, just decided to disconnect and make the most of it. She made some decisions about her business while she was there and just took some time to focus. And one of them was to focus on social media. And literally within three days after she got home, she saw somebody in her town that said, I'm going to Giraffe Manor in, in Kenya and we're going to donate $10,000 to a local charity and so excited. And, you know, and she assumed this guy's already going. He has a travel advisor, this, this vacation, the safari is planned, but she, and she took the chance and she reached out anyway. And, and we, we, Giraffe Manor was one of our first stops. And she said, make sure to give Lily the giraffe lots of kisses and make sure and stay away from Kelly because Kelly just had a baby. And if you turn your back on her, she'll bite you in the head. And so that was just basically what she posted on Instagram. Well, that turned into a conversation that I was just there. I just returned home. And literally, we just got back on November um, the 14th. She has 12 clients leaving on December 6th this weekend to the tune of $280,000 for the entire um, safari. So, I mean, the experience that she had and what she invested in the experience, both time and money has been returned to her more than time full, uh, more than five, 
five times fold. So I just think, um, you know, sometimes the other side of yes is, is a really, a really great place to live. And, and I'm so proud of her and, and how that worked out for her. But um, that's what I would encourage you guys to do. Take the chance, go for it and um, have the experiences now when they're, when they're, when they are a little bit different and you just never know what's going to come from that. Yeah, I, I, exactly what Adam said earlier too. Uh, I mean, your travels can, can lead to business. And I think that's one of the great things about this industry um, is because everybody loves to travel and uh, helping your business out while you do it is, isn't the worst thing to happen. Um, Adam, we have a couple of questions. I know because you're talking about Mexico, you might have a, you might have some insight to these. Um, we have a couple of questions about the new CDC warning to Mexico and how is that impacting your clients or is that something your clients want to know about or you're addressing it at all to your clients? Um, can you speak about that? Um, if the CDC warning is having any impact? Yeah, there's a couple of people that have. I mean, I think it came out three days ago. Um, it was all over the news. And um, I, I have the same family that actually is going in December asked me about it. And basically, I just said what I've said already. You know, it's all about. Your, how you feel, what the precautions you're going to take, how safe you feel yourself, what your risk assessment is, uh, and your, what you, you know, how you protect yourself, basically. Um, I told them about my experience and how safe I felt. And it's interesting. And there are different things you can tell people too, in, especially Puerto Vallarta. When you, people think about Puerto Vallarta, they don't realize there's two different states there. So Jalisco and Riviera Nayarit are two different states, and they each have different levels of COVID right now. So it's interesting to know that, to tell clients if they want to go to Riviera Nayarit, which is where Nuevo Vallarta is, they're actually on a lower uh, COVID numbers than the state of Jalisco, which is Puerto Vallarta itself. So there are different things you can tell them to make them feel more comfortable there. As far as Cancun, I'm not sure if there are different things there, but I know from being in Puerto Vallarta that there are different rules in different states and some states have higher levels of COVID than others. So if you want to go to a safer destination, there are some different options. Yeah, I, I mean, I, again, I, it's, uh, I think you being there firsthand is, is important, to, is important to, uh, to have that information and to have that experience to pass along. Um, so we are going to wrap up. I do want to say thank you so much, uh, Kristen, Mandy, Adam, and Connie. I mean, thank you for lending us your time uh, and lending us your expertise and advice. I, I, I hope all the attendees got a lot out of this today. I know I did. Um, I want to remind also everyone, please join us next week for our last uh, session for 2020. Um, if you want to rewatch this session, it'll be on our YouTube page. And uh, thank you all so much. Happy quasi holidays so far. And I hope to see you guys all in person very soon. So thank you guys so much. Thank and you. Uh, have a great rest thank of your week. You. Thank you. Thank Bye. you. Bye. Bye guys. Bye.